Today I'm going to be showing you my method on making an LED light kit for your RC, just like the one I have installed on my Traxxas Stampede. It has four headlights and an on and off switch on the side. First of all, you're going to need 5mm LEDs, and today I'm just going to be using clear white because I want to go ahead and replace the kit that I have in the Stampede, mainly because I want to have six LED headlights instead of just four. Now LEDs come in a large variety of colors and whichever ones you want to use feel free to. The price for LEDs goes anywhere from a penny to three dollars per LED. If you buy them in bulk you can usually get them for a pretty decent price so make sure you look around. For LED holders I highly suggest you get plastic ones. Now these can average anywhere from uh, a penny to 50 cents per holder depending on where you buy them and how big of a bulk you buy them for. But I highly advise that you get the plastic ones and avoid the metal ones. Mainly because RCs are going to crash and with a metal LED holder it's going to bend under the crash and it's going to mess up the whole light. With plastic ones, they usually absorb the impact or the LED will pop out and you can easily just push it back into place. Next, you're going to want to get a battery holder. Now, there's other kits out there that pretty much plug their LED light kits into the receiver box and feed off the energy from the RC battery. It's a method that I just, I don't care for. I prefer to have its own source of power so you can turn it on whenever you want to. Now I messed around with a lot of different types of voltage and I really didn't come down to the conclusion that two AA batteries is just enough volts to power the LEDs without burning them out. If you don't know how much a AA battery is, it's 1.5 volt per battery, so 3 volts is perfect. If you have too many volts, it'll burn out the LEDs and the method I'm about to show you, it's not going to be easy to replace the LEDs since they're soldered directly onto the wire. Now, for battery cases, they come in a large variety and quality. They average anywhere from a oh, dollar to ten dollars. This one cost me three dollars. And I highly advise you get a battery holder that has a lid. That way the batteries will be completely secure. Your RC is going to be bouncing around. You don't want them to pop out and hit the pavement. Could cause a lot of problems in the long run. You're obviously going to want to have control over when your LED lights are on and off, so you're going to need a switch. And I just chose this simple, small slide switch. It only cost me a dollar. Now switches vary anywhere from a dollar to five dollars in price, and they come in a pretty large assortment. So look around and see what you like the most. And you're also going to need some screws and nuts in order to install the switch. And finally, you're going to need wire to hook everything up. This is 24 gauge intercom wire. Now you can also use speaker and project wire, but I highly advise you get one that has a positive and negative. Now you don't want to go anything bigger than 24 gauge, otherwise it's just a waste of money and it's awkward to install into your RC. Anything smaller works just fine. Wire can range anywhere from three to thirty dollars per roll or spool, whatever you want to call it. This one cost me seven. So be sure to look around. There isn't just black and white either. You can get them in different colors. To cover up the connections, I highly, highly, highly advise you use shrink tube. Electrical tape will fall off rather easily and liquid electrical tape can get messy. And if you ever need to resolder something, you're going to have one hell of a fun time pulling that stuff off. With this, it's just easy and quick. You're going to need soldering iron and solder. If you don't know how to use one of these, don't worry about it. I'll show you a quick tutorial on how I do it. Now, anything less than using solder is just not going to have a very strong connection and the wiring can come undone, so I highly advise you use this. You're going to need a wire stripper and cutter. Also, you're going to need a small flathead screwdriver and needle nose pliers just to help you install the switch. You're obviously going to be drilling some holes into the body in order to mount the LEDs. The size of the drill bit that I use is 15 64. Also, you might need to use some other drill bits in order to make the holes to mount the switch. 
You're also going to need a lighter, but only if you're using the string tubing. You're also going to need a hot glue gun in order to install the battery pack to the inside of the RC body. You could use industrial strength double side tape, but I've had better results with this. And finally, a little Gorilla Tape to use inside of the RC body to tape the wires down. You could also use duct tape. So the first part is figuring out where you want to mount the LEDs. Now you can see that I went ahead and put them directly onto the stickers. I want to put two more LEDs right there. And if you're a little bit shaky with the drill, then you can just go ahead and make a small little mark where it's going to be. When you're getting ready to drill the hole, be sure just to take your time. Let the drill do the work and don't push too hard. Also, make sure your finger isn't on the other side of where the drill bit is going to be coming out of. That would not be very good. Just like that. You're going to want to make sure that the holes are the proper size. So what you're going to want to do is get the LED mount and put it into the hole. Now if it's a really tight fit in there, as you can see it is still a little small. All you have to do is get the drill, put it back into the hole, and then just move it around while it's on. want to do a circular motion when you're doing that. Then, once it's the right size, just like that, you are ready to go. You're also going to want to figure out where to mount your switch. Now I mount my switch on the side of the body where it's out of the way from impact, but it's really up to you where you want to put it. Now it's time to go ahead and start doing all the wiring. To make things a little bit easier, go ahead and put the batteries into the battery holder. Now the main reason why you want to go ahead and put the batteries into the battery holder is you'll have the ability to test your connections. You can test the LEDs to make sure they work and after you solder something you can make sure that the connection is solid. So the first step is soldering the LED onto the wire. Now just a little quick fact, if you ever wonder which one's the positive and which one's the negative, the longer wire is always going to be positive and the shorter wire is always going to be negative. Now just so you don't get mixed up, the wires do not need to be that long so you're going to have to cut them. But just be sure to go ahead and cut them at an angle that way you still know which one's negative and which one's positive. In order to do this I'm not going to need that much wire for the first connection. So I'm just going to cut a little bit. I find it much easier to use just wire strippers or wire cutters in order to split the wires like that. Pull the wires a good amount apart. Then you're going to want to strip them. You don't need to strip them that much. About a quarter of an inch. That should work just fine. Once your wire has been stripped and it's been split, you're going to need a couple of pieces of shrink tube. So these can be um, about half an inch, three-fourths of an inch. Go ahead and stick them on to the wire. Since now it's time to go ahead and start soldering, go ahead and turn on your iron. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and want to put a little bit of solder onto the LED strands first. Now a quick warning, solder smoke is toxic so make sure you do this in a well ventilated area and this is really a quick easy thing to do it's not that hard it takes a little bit of practice but not much get the solder next to the wire and with the soldering iron just go ahead and touch it and it should melt relatively quick and you just basically want to go ahead get a couple of dabs onto the strands just like that then you're going to move on to the wire and do the same exact thing Get a little bit of solder onto the tips. And you can see all that smoke that comes off. Don't break that stuff in, guys. Not good for you. Voila. Next, you're going to want to bring the positive wire to the positive feed and put the two solder knobs together and do a quick melting. 
As soon as it liquefies, pull off. Once it dries, then you have a solid connection. Do that with both the positive and the negative. Alright, here's another angle of me doing this. And you don't want to heat the wire too much, otherwise the heat will run through the wire and damage the LED. And also make sure that the shrink tube is well away from the heat, otherwise it's going to shrink and you're going to have a whole bunch of problems. But yes, go ahead and push down the shrink tube. And before you shrink the tube, you're going to want to make sure that the connection was secure. So, go to the other end, strip it like before, get your battery case ready, and test the connection. So, positive to positive, and negative to negative. And as you can see, the light turns on perfectly. So it's a good connection. Now that you know that you did it right, feel free to shrink that tubing. Get your lighter, graze it, move it back and forth. Very sporadic. You don't want to hold it in one place, otherwise you'll burn it. And that's it. So I'm going to have to do this three times. Two of them the same length and one a little bit longer, since that's the measurements. Two of them are together and one's a little further away. Once I have them done, I can go ahead and twist the end of the wires together and hook them up. So let's go ahead and solder these ends. Alright, as you can see, I went ahead and soldered those together. So now I need to test the connection to make sure it's alright. All three of them should come on. They sure do. Now, what I'm going to do is solder this onto a single wire and then put shrink tube across that. Now you can see that I have all the LEDs running to just one wire. So I did that with the other side. Now it's time to go ahead and bring these two wires together to a single connection. Alright, so now I have all the LEDs going down to a single negative and positive wire. So let's go ahead and check the connection. Negative, negative, positive, positive, all the LEDs are working perfectly. So it's time to go ahead and mount them into the body. Then, using the hot glue gun, I'm going to mount the battery case right there. Now, the negative wire coming out of the battery case is going to go straight to the negative wire on the LEDs. With that all in, now it's time to go ahead and extend the positive wire by, well, adding positive wire and making it as long as the positive wire coming out of the battery case. Now that the positive wire has been extended, I'm going to use these two ends and hook it up to the switch. I'm going to have one wire run to the middle and then the other wire can go to the left or right. Now what I don't want to do is put a wire on each end, otherwise there won't be a connection. One has to be in the middle. With both of the positive wires going to the switch, I now have control over the LED lights. So all I have to do is mount the switch. Now that the switch has been mounted, all I'm going to do is use a little Gorilla Tape and tape down these wires. And that's it. Now I can simply just flip the switch on the side and all the LEDs will come on. And that's all I have to show you, but using the same method you can put in brake lights or you can install them into the chassis itself and create ground effects. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask.